Okay, so something that's going to come up if you're an aficionado of vintage cassettes. Problems with the cassettes. you got to remember these things were manufactured 20, 30, 40 years ago or more, depending on what cassettes you have. This one, for example, was manufactured in 1981. So it's going on 35 years old. And problems start to crop up. One of the common ones, and you can see right here, one of the common problems here is the pressure pads will fall off. This one is no longer where it's supposed to be. You can see it's right up here, stuck in the inside of the shell. It's supposed to be in the center of that little metal plate there. For comparison, here's a cassette with its... For comparison, here's a cassette with its pressure pad intact. Right there. What that does is, well, exactly what it says. It provides pressure on the back of the tape as the tape is running through the track. It provides pressure against the tape to the head, the playback head. And what will happen over the years is a glue that holds that little felt pad onto the metal backing plate the glue will oxidize and the pad will fall off. That will make your tapes unplayable. So we have to fix that. So we'll start by putting the tape in an upright position like this. I use a screwdriver. You can also use a toothpick or something small like that. Get behind the tape here and pull it out a little. Just a little bit so it kind of maintains its height. That'll allow you to get the pressure pad out. You see it just fell out there. There we go. So we'll pull the tape out just a little bit so it maintains its height above the pressure plate here. And then I use super glue. A gel works best, I've found. A little easier to apply and it won't run run away on you. Then I've got the pad here. What we'll do first is apply a dab of this super glue gel to that metal plate. very small dab there. Then I like to use a thumbtack. Just jab the center of the felt pad. You can also use tweezers for this. I don't have a set of tweezers handy, so just stick the pad, pull it up, and put it on top of the gel. And there it is. And try and orientate it back to its original position. Push down a little bit, let it set. And there we go. It's back in its original position. This will take a little while to dry, so I'm going to leave this tape loop up. Because as the super glue dries, it lets off some pretty toxic chemicals that will get on the back of the tape here and possibly cause it to stick to the pad. So, make sure it's in the right position, and just stand the tape up and put it in the background, and I'll come back to it later, and the glue will be set, and I can spool that tape back up into the shell, and it'll be good as new. And when this happens to one, it usually happens to several. This is another tape I found going through. Same problem. Pad 
glue is oxidized and it's fall fallen off. So I'll just set up a little assembly line here and do a couple. And yet another one. But with this one, the pad is missing entirely. I don't know where it, where it went. Sometimes you can check the case, the tape case that it was in. Sometimes it'll it'll be in there or inside the J card, and it's not. It's just vanished somewhere. It probably fell on the ground as I was pulling the tape out of the case, so it's long gone. So this is when I go back to my library of spare tape parts. And as you can see, I've got quite a few pads in there. So we'll just find one. And I'll use that. Now I've heard of people using regular super glue, of course. I've also heard them using the white paper glue and I guess that works I would advise against it I haven't had the best of luck with uh, paper glue adhering to the metal it dries up and flakes off and the pad falls off again but some guys swear by it I would rather go with a super glue especially super glue gel it sits up and it's permanent so there you go there's how to replace pads now, while that glue is drying and setting up, I thought I'd demonstrate a little bit more about how the pads work and what they are. So we'll go back to this demonstration tape I've got here. Get to get focused. There we go. There's the pad, the white, white felt pad there in the center. You can see how it runs behind the tape. And this is a clear shell tape, so we'll be able to see how the head comes into contact with it. Okay, so I have a little recorder here that I use to test cassettes and troubleshoot them and rewind them and fast forward them so I don't tax my really good tape deck up there and burn the motors up. I just use this little thing. I got it for uh, three bucks at a thrift store. And right there you can see the felt pad, the pressure pad. And here's how it works. I'm going to hit play on the recorder. You see the head come in, and the pad provides pressure behind the tape to secure the tape against the head, and that's how the cassette plays. Let's do that for you one more time. There's the felt pad. Here's the playback head. And there's the pad contacting the head and keeping the tape firmly against the playback surface. And that is the importance of these felt pads. Now you might ask what would happen if you played a tape back that didn't have one of those felt pressure pads on it. What would happen would be the tape would slip back and forth against the playhead and you'd hear garbled noise. It would probably shift, if it, was, if it was a stereo recording, it would probably shift left to right in the stereo spectrum. Uh, you'd lose a lot of the highs. The alignment from the tape to the head would be all off. It would just be sloppy. So the sound would be pretty well garbled, and there's a very good chance you could rip your tape apart and crinkle it up and destroy it. So always check to make sure you've got a pressure pad on your tapes before you play them. And if you don't, now you know how to replace them.